talk first about the lake season. What people I don't think appreciate today is that in the early years, we couldn't come to the lake until about the middle of June when school was out. And then by Labor Day, we had to close the place up. So it was a very short season compared to nowadays. The lake season was really pretty short. And you were lucky, as I remember it, whether you got two or three weeks, I suppose it was. Dollar remembers better than I do how long we would be up here on the average during a summer season. Mm -hmm. I remember traveling to the lake. There was quite an all-morning affair. For one thing, we had, as I remember, the 1920s, we had a Model T Ford. And it was quite a trip to Angola. And we've told many people about how exciting it was to get to Angola because you know, after Angola, it was not very far anymore. <laughs> now, but you I, guys lived in Fort Wayne, but right? I, we lived in Fort Wayne. It was about 45 miles to Angola at that time on the old roads. I also remember that that last stretch from Angola to the road that go, went to the lake in the very early years was a gravel road. Mm -hmm. And that was pretty bumpy in a Model T Ford. I remember that it must have been in the year probably that they were paving that stretch of the highway, of old Highway 27. We had to go another way. And we had to go out of Angola to the west and probably take the road that kids would know now as the Fun Center Road. Oh, uh -huh, the fun spot? The fun, fun spot road. It would take, we would take that road and then come around that way past Paldy Town, which went along okay uh, past the golf course and, but then when you got to the, about behind Souls Bay, there was a stretch in there which was pretty rough, just a dirt road. And I know that there was a, one place where a pretty, pretty strong creek came through it. Right over had, the road? Across the road. Oh, yeah. And, and that had just a little simple bridge across it, just boards on some uh -huh. logs. There was a sign there, cross at your own risk. <laughs> and every year we well, during that summer when we came we had to come that way, when we come to that bridge we'd say, we think, are we gonna make it or aren't we? <laughs> we had to come around that way, I know at least one season. I remember that. That's traveling to the lake. And I remember that um, You never got we, stuck though. No, we never got stuck and we always yeah. always made it across the bridge. I do remember that even after the highway was put in, and we were in our Model T Ford, on at least one occasion, we came up for a longer stay, and so we, our dad packed, built a black box, which he fastened to the left running board. All those cars had a running board on them. And he covered it with black linoleum, or uh, black um, uh, oil cloth. And we packed all our clothes in there because you couldn't get it all and the children into the car. And now we, there were five of you, right? Uh, well, uh, yes, we, we after Mort. Mort was born. Yeah, we, oh, okay. <laughs> this might have been before Mort was born. <laughs> was so before it's, it's sort of a uh, B, M, and A, you know, before <laughs> Mort or after Mort. That's, uh, that's part of the history is in that, too, as far as the size of the family is concerned. Can you uh, go over the ages and how old? Because Mort's quite a bit younger then, no, right? I, all right. Okay. All right. But uh, finish I was about your story. finish your story. Uh, yeah, okay. All right. So I'll finish my story. The, 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 I don't. I want particular. The 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 climax always came when we turned off of the highway onto the lake road, which at that at in the early years was a very steep climb. Late in later years, maybe by about 1930 or so, they cut it down, made it more manageable. But in the early years, it was much steeper. Uh -huh. And when we did it with that, with our Ford loaded with this box and all that, we didn't make it. We made it about three quarters <laughs> of the way, and Pop put the brake on, the emergency brake. We all got out of the car and pushed, and pushed it over the rest of the hill. And then it was free sailing to the lake. And the most exciting thing besides seeing Aunt Gola was when it came down the last hill, and you could, and through the trees you could see the lake. And you would know it was still there. Now, the reason I mention that, that wouldn't seem very strange to people today. 
But I, that's why I mentioned at the beginning that the lake season was very short, and the lake was very far away from mm -hmm. our house, and it was very hard to get there. And you, and as a child, you had the feeling, will the lake still be there mm -hmm. when we come back? And and when you saw that the lake was still there, that was a very exciting feeling. <clears throat> I want to say that when we one of the first things we had to do when we got here was to find out, first of all, whether we had any water, whether we could live here. If there was no water, you couldn't stay. And for water, we were dependent on the springs, and particularly the spring box. Each cottage had a spring box. Ours was way up on the very back of the back lot, right at the beginning of that rise of the hill you can see now, about uh -huh. where that road is, or behind our present garage. That was our spring box. And uh, we, had to, we had to go back there and look in the box and see there was any, how high the water. If the water was pretty high, then we thought, well, it's doing pretty well. It's a good season. There's enough water, probably. Was this box dug into the ground? It was, there, was a, there was a box. It's the I think same we, box that's up there now. There's still a box up there now. Yeah, that's, that's a Except box. That the in fact, well we is used to take the top off, well, we had to look first for where dead animals and pick them out. Oh. Because something Sometimes, yeah, there would be dead animals in the yeah. box. They'd crawl in there and die in the box, and you had to get those out so it wouldn't contaminate the water. But once we established that there was water, then we turned the water on. As Dow reminded me, you had to crawl underneath the cottage. Because there was just a lattice work base around the cottage. There was it was up on pillars on old you old remember where concrete the front porch blocks. Was. I never was here in front porch. You know, and so you had to crawl underneath that, that that and through that door in the lattice work and crawl under the cottage and cut under the cottage and turn the water on. And then you hoped it would flow. And then you would <coughs> you go and open up the <coughs> the faucets and that, and either there was or there was, but usually there was water, and there was water there, and there we, and the toilet would fill up, and then we thought we can live here again for another <laughs> summer. That was a happy feeling. We had water. Now, yeah. Dolly mentioned when there was drought, sometimes you didn't have water. Oh yeah. 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 Sometimes yeah. it was very low. Yeah. I I can't remember that we were never without water. Sometimes we were we had a lot of water. And they have to tell a story about the cooler, because they asked about the cooler. Because mm -hmm. in the back of our kitchen, we had a, a metal box. It was about a foot and a half high, about two feet wide, and about four or five feet long. And that was connected to our spring. Another pipe came and flowed into this cooler box, and then it had a drain at the bottom. I guess it just rolled out. I don't know where it drained to. It rolled out in the ground somewhere. But <laughs> We would let the water flow into this, this cooler, and there were some. We had some uh, uh, shelves. shelves in there, and that's where we'd keep our butter and anything we want to keep cool. That was our cooler because we had no ice. Now there, uh, this was a very. This could become very sophisticated, as in the case of our neighbor to the north, because that that cottage had very fine things, and they made the best use of the the, the spring water. They had a real ice box in their kitchen, which I thought was very fancy. I only saw it one time. And uh, I and opened the door and saw it inside where it was a complete set of, of uh, copper pipes. And this spring water flowed through those pipes all summer long, and that made an ice box for them. And the water flowed from there through some more pipes and then made this beautiful cascade in the front of their cottage, so there was fresh water flowing down those cascades all summer long. Now, sometimes it was a dry summer, there wouldn't be very much, but most summers there was water flowing down there, just like now, we got it flowing out in the lake out in front here, and it's still flowing down uh, uh, next to their cottage, and, there, and there's water oozing out of there all the time. Now, the uh, cascade, it was here when you were. Oh, the, that, that cottage was built in 1928. Okay. 28? Yeah, it was 1928 when they finished the Cascade. And I met um, Marion Young, I think, was it her father that worked on this Cascade? One of the people that belongs to the Hoosier Hills. Her dad helped build that Cascade. Mm -hmm. And uh, Shiman was a real estate man from Fort Wayne. And he watched every nail go into that cottage. And that was gorgeous. 
But I think the fascinating thing they had, not only did they have a refrigerator that worked, but they also had electric lights. But they had a Delco system. And you know the bottom with, of their with, garage? With, that was uh -huh. a whole Delco system. And batteries. They, all Which was a generator? Batteries. batteries. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I remember because his daughter, Elsie Scheiman, and I used to have to go up, and I don't really know what we did, but I remember we had water and we had to put it in the batteries, so it must have been distilled water that Still we were water. putting in, the, mm -hmm. in these batteries. Mm -hmm. And then they'd turn on them and charge them up, and then they'd have lights for that night. And uh, they huh. were really, they, they were the only people that had electricity, everybody else. Do you remember? We just had coal oil lamps. Now we, we could talk, okay, that takes us to our 